I think it's time we have a conversation about building generative AI applications in Java and the difference between calling some of the large language models out there, like OpenAI's GPT or Google's Gemini, and the difference between the LLM itself and the product that sits in front of it. Now, this becomes important because as you start to build your own applications in Java, one of the things that might come up is memory or conversational history. Uh, so we'll see an example of that, and then I'll show you one of the easiest ways to build memory or chat conversation into your Java applications when you're talking to these different LLMs. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to head over to my screen here. I have open chat GPT. I'm using just the uh, GPT 4.0 model. And what do I mean by this? Um, let's go ahead and start a conversation. So I'm just going to say something like, my name is Dan. Let's see what uh, it responds with. It says, nice to meet you, Dan. How can I assist you today? So if I come back and I say, what is my name? Uh, it will know because uh, memory or conversational history. Now again, this is an important concept to remember. The web is stateless. There is no remembering things that, that happens uh, when, it ta when you talk to a large language model. The large language model itself knows nothing about this conversational history. What's happening is this chat GPT is a product that sits in front of the LLM. So we got to remember that when we're building our own applications because by default, we don't have that conversational history. But this is important because it allows me to iterate on what I'm doing. So let's just take another example of this. Um, and actually, what I'm going to do is go over to Google Gemini. All right, so I'm going to come over to uh, Google Gemini here and demonstrate another uh, kind of prompt. So I'm going to say something like, uh, write me a short summary on machine learning, All right? So um, I'm giving it very clear instructions here. I want to write a short summary on what machine learning is. Now, I'm going to follow up this prompt because I want to iterate on this. I don't like these bullet points. I really just like want one to two paragraphs that I can use somewhere. So I'm going to say, write me one to two paragraphs without using bullet points. Keep it concise, right? So let's see what we get from that. And it's thinking, and there's our one to two paragraphs. Now notice, I didn't say write me one to two paragraphs on machine learning. And that's because it has that conversational history. We can start to iterate on things. And again, this is important. This is the interface. This is the product that sits on top of the LLM. The product is saving conversational history and allowing me to iterate on my uh, responses. So we need to remember that when we're doing this in our own applications. This becomes an important concept. And I'm going to show you how to do this using Spring AI. And again, one of the questions that, that has come up lately is, hey, Dan, a lot of these LLMs provide REST endpoints. What's stopping me from doing this with just pure curl or Java code? Why do I need a framework like Spring AI? Spring AI is much more than a facilitator of REST calls. When we start building these real-world applications, we're going to run into these challenges like this, whether it's, you know, how do I, how do I use RAG effect effectively in my applications? How do I turn a response into a type in Java that I can work with? How do I remember conversational history, right? These are the challenges we start to face as we start to build these real-world applications, and that is what Spring is going to enable us to do. Again, kind of taking away some of those hard things, making them very easy, and allow us to focus on building our applications. So what I'm going to do here today is create a new application. So we're using Spring Boot 3.3.4. I'm going to say dev.danvega. We'll call this chat memory. Mem Dan. I'm going to just put this in a default package here of dev.danvega. And then we're going to need a couple of dependencies. I'm going to build a web app. And for this one, I will go ahead and use OpenAI. But again, this will work across the LLM providers. 
Uh, if you want to check out Google Gemini, uh, that would be a really good uh, use case for this as well. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and generate a new application. This is going to download a zip file. Uh, you can go ahead and open this up in whatever text editor or IDE you want to use. I'm going to be using IntelliJ's Ultimate Edition. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. Again, extremely easy to do in Spring AI. I want to make sure we understand that. Uh, but I think you'll see that through the example that we're going to build today. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and open this up. And what are we waiting for? Let's write some code. All right, so here we are in our application. Uh, everything looks good. This is kind of stock Spring application. What I want to do now is uh, do a couple of things. Let's start with our application.properties. No matter what LLM we are talking to, uh, all the code is going to look the same except the properties that we are configuring for that specific large language model, in this case, OpenAI. All right, so we need to configure a couple of properties here. The first one I'm going to set is the model. Which model do you want to use? So with different LLMs, there are different models that you can take advantage of. So I'm going to use uh, GPT. For O in this case. And then I also need to set an API key. You could hard code this in here. I don't suggest that. I'm going to externalize this to a uh, very to an environment variable. So I'm going to say open AI, uh, open AI API key. I already have that uh, out there, so I can go ahead and use that. So now that I have those properties, I'm going to begin to write some code. So I'm going to write a simple chat controller. So let's say chat controller. And this is going to be a REST controller because we want to go ahead and call this. We want to send in a new request from somewhere. This could be like a command line utility. We'll just use like an HTTP client for this. And the first thing that I'll need is the chat client. So we're going to say private final chat client. Uh, we'll call this chat client. And we'll get this through constructor injection. Uh, we actually use a builder there for that. So I'm going to call this builder. And now I can go ahead and say builder.build. And this will be just like this for now. We'll come back and we'll do something here uh, in a second. But right now, we just need that chat client. So uh, again, if this is kind of new to you, if Spring AI is new to you, uh, go ahead and uh, check out some previous videos I've done on this. I have a whole playlist on Spring AI. But this chat client is an interface. And because we are using OpenAI, that's the only thing on the class path right now, uh, there is uh, an implementation of this that kind of gets wired up for us. So that is what's getting passed into here. And then we have a chat client that we can talk to OpenAI with. The beauty of this is the code is the same. If we're talking to Google Gemini, we just configure a couple different properties over here in application.properties. So now what I want to do is I want to take in a request. So I'll say this is a git mapping to our root. And I'm going to return the response from the LM. That's going to be a string. We'll just call this home. And then what I want to do is just say chat client. Dot prompt. So we're sending in a prompt. The user message that we're going to send in is a message that we will take in as a request parameter here. So we're not hard coding anything in. Every time we run this application, we can take in new messages and display them here. So this will be a message. We will go ahead and pass this in. And then we need to call the LM. So we're calling OpenAI's GPT-40. And then we're going to return the content. So that's enough to get us up and running. A uh, lot, very minimal code to make this happen. Uh, another reason uh, I'm a big fan of this project. So once it's running, I need to call this endpoint using some type of HTTP client. I'm going to use a little utility called HTTPI. Uh, so HTTPIE, uh, if you want to go ahead and check that out. Kind of like curl, but just a little bit more readable. And it allows me to basically just make a GET request to localhost 8080. And if I do that, I can pass a message in and say, my name is Dan. So we saw this on ChatGPT. And uh, this is saying not allowed. Oops, I made a mistake here. Let's see what I did. Yes, so I need to send this in. So with HTTP, I, HTTP uh, you have to use the double equal sign here to basically say this is the request parameter. So now if I go ahead and send this, uh, we should be able to send this in. Uh, Hello, Dan. How can I assist you today? Now what we're going to do is say, what is my name? And we're going to send that again. And it says, I'm sorry, I don't have access to your personal data. 
This means that it's not remembering our previous previous conversation, similar to how we did this on the chat GPT interface. So again, remember that is the product sitting on top of the LLM. So the product is what is remembering that conversational history. So what I wanna do is do something similar. So the way that we can do this is we could uh, come in here and kind of do this manually, right? We could uh, somehow store these messages somewhere and then every time that we make a request, we send those messages in. Uh, that seems a little bit cumbersome to me and thankfully Spring AI makes this very easy to do with something called an advisor. So we're gonna create a new advisor here. There's a bunch of pre-built advisors in fact, I'm going to go ahead and point you to a blog post uh, by my coworker, Christian, and this goes into supercharging your AI applications with Spring AI Advisors, and it goes through and talks about what advisors are, how they work, and that Spring AI comes with several pre-built advisors to handle common scenarios. Um, one of those is a message chat memory advisor, uh, there's a prompt chat memory advisor, vector store. We can do things like question and answer with RAG. There's a whole bunch of those. You can build your own, uh, but there are some built-in ones. And we see the example here. There's a new message chat memory advisor, um, which takes in uh, chat memory. So let's go ahead and create that. So I'm going to say new memory, memory, oh new message chat memory advisor, and then it's gonna take in a, um, let's go ahead and look at this. So we can see it takes in a chat memory. So we can just create a new in-memory chat memory, and uh, you can obviously kind of scale this out if you wanna use a, a different Im implementation of this, uh, but this will work for this example. So now if we go ahead and rerun this application and open up our terminal, and let's just run these two again. So let's start with, hey, my name is Dan. What can I assist with you today? And now I'm gonna say, what is my name? And it says, your name is Dan. This is great. So now we can do things like iterate on that, right? So we could say, uh, write me a short summary of the Java programming language, right? So we should get uh, a short summary of what Java is, what it's great at. Um, so here we see there's a bunch of, here's key features of Java. And again, if I wanted to kind of iterate on this, now I don't have to say, write me a short summary of Java, right? Now I can say, can we make that summary more concise? one to two paragraphs with no bullet points. So let's go ahead and ask it that, and let's see what we get back. Now we get our one to two paragraphs. There's no bullet points, it's more concise. And again, we didn't say specifically, do this about the Java programming language. That is now in the conversational history so it knows how to iterate on that. So uh, I think that's all I'm gonna cover today. Uh, the code for this will be in a GitHub repository. You can find the link for that in the description below. I just wanted to take some time because I've gotten some questions about this. Uh, trying to, to remember that the web is stateless and that these products that sit on top of these LMs are the one holding that conversational history, not the large language model itself. Um, I hope what I conveyed here as well, just how easy this is to do in Java, thanks to Spring AI. Hey, if you have other questions about things you're trying to do in generative AI, and building intelligent applications in Java, please let me know in the comments below. Feel free to reach out to me. I love creating content around uh, generative AI and specifically Spring AI, so I'd be happy to put that together. But friends, you know what time it is. If you found this video useful, uh, you can do something for me. You can share it, send it to a friend. Hey, let, look at this, how easy this is to do in Spring AI. Uh, the other thing you can do is leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding.